going on vinyl community welcome to another video with the record spinner in today's video i'm going to be doing an unboxing of the kiss can am tour 1977 picture disc box set this is another one of those kiss picture disc box set releases that have been circulating amongst the bootleg circles uh, that are just filled to the brim with beautifully put together booklets picture disc vinyl, bits of memorabilia, and of course, phenomenal bootleg recordings from whichever tour the box sets cover. And obviously, as you see here, this covers the Love Gun tour from 1977, and uh, this thing is a feast for the eyes as well as the ears. So enough of the chit chat, let's jump into what this video is all about. So as you can see here, has the iconic Love Gun album cover. Obviously, the only modification being the title of the set, which replaces the album title. And as you can see, it has a bit of a nice sort of metallic look to it. And maybe you can see there are some nice kind of shiny details around the band member's makeup, which is quite nice. Very shiny, depending on how, you know, you look at it via the angle. Here is the spine of the set, once you put it on your, uh, your shelf and you see it there. And then here is the back, which is basically, you know, the back cover of Love Gun, minus all the text, so you can see just the, the columns and such. And I even love how you have the Casablanca record and filmworks and rock SETI credits. It just, it is so old school looking with those credits there. So that is a very nice touch. As always, lift off lid, which comes off just like this and we are treated to the goodies of the set. So first we have this little plastic enclosure of bits of memorabilia and such. So let's see what is inside here. So first we have a pennant for the Canadian tour from 1977. Um, as you can see, the graphic that they used is the one that was featured on the uh, Kiss Bubblegum cards from back in the day. And I do have to say, this is like printed on a nice sort of soft touch um, type, you know, paper stock. Like I almost want to wear gloves while handling this, so I don't know why I'm putting my hands on it, but there you can see that there. Very, very nice indeed. And then here is a little sort of promo display. Is this a sticker? Yes, it is actually. I'm not going to peel it just to double check, but that is a sticker sheet there, which is very cool. And then we also have some large photo cards of each of the band members, which of course come with their respective signatures. So here is Paul Stanley's. Here we have Ace Frehley's. Got Peter Chris as well as Gene Simmons. And then we also have a cool shot of Gene, Paul, and Ace together at the front of the stage. And then we also have this giant fold-up poster, which I'm gonna try my best to capture all on camera, or at least pan it to where you can see all of it. But here we have a wide spread of the Love Gun stage, which is absolutely phenomenal. That's a great wide angle shot. Band logo. Logo, of course, is from the Alive 2 album cover, as you can tell by the color scheme. Nice sort of 76 era photo from right around the time of Destroyer. And we have some individual portraits of the band members playing live, and it says Canada Tour on the bottom. And this folds up just like this, very nice nice sort of collage piece and now we get into the picture disc vinyl itself so these all come of course in their little plastic bags and let's see what we are dealing with so audio quality wise we kind of get the best of both worlds in terms of both audience and soundboard recordings so starting off we have the show from montreal this is from july uh, the 12th and uh, what's unique about this show is that this is the only recording from the canadian leg of the tour that circulates so if you're looking for a you know a representation of this canadian tour this is the only show you have and honestly that's perfectly fine because this is a fantastic sounding audience recording probably the best one from this tour um the audience reaction to paul's raps are just so superb and the band's levels between instrumentation and vocals just come across so strong but i don't know if you can notice here something rather intriguing 
is the fact that early on in the Love Gun Tour, they were still opening with Detroit Rock City. And as you can see, I Stole Your Love appears kind of towards the middle of the show. And obviously that would be fine-tuned once the band made it to the States and California and Texas and such where they started opening with I Stole Your Love. So it'll be interesting to hear this show with that opener. And here is the Gene picture disc. And as you can see, this is kind of designed after the... Um, the sort of belt buckle designs from back in the day, which is quite nice. And here's the track list there, and then you, can, and then you see the ladies on the uh, bottom there. So that's for the jean sleeve. And then we have the rest of the show here with Ace. Also, I gotta say, the, the designs of how the band members appear on these sleeves kind of remind me of the collectible fig pins that have come out recently from, um, gosh, I can't recall where they were made available, but they basically, there's a series of four, and they're all modeled after how they appear on the Love Gun cover, and it just kind of reminds me, they have that slight kind of metallic look to them, which is quite nice. Anyways, enough of that tangent. There's Ace there, and then we have the rest of the show, and then... To kind of fill up the fourth side, we have some recordings from the studio side of Alive 2. Um, from what I've read somewhere, they are alternate recordings. Um, I'm not sure if it's that or they're just directly taken from the studio side as it was released. So I'll have to listen for myself and hear it. But there's that. And here is the Ace picture disc here. very nice also i I've, I've probably said it before in previous other videos showcasing these uh bootleg picture discs but they are absolutely heavyweight i'm talking this has got to be a dead set 180 or 200 gram um type picture disc pressings they are just absolutely phenomenal good stuff here so that is for the audience recording portion now we're going to get to the soundboard and here we have Fort Worth, uh, Texas uh, from September of 1977. Now, with this, it's kind of interesting. So they did two shows in Fort Worth. Uh, both shows are available via soundboard, but different configurations. So the first show, um, the recording starts with Peter's drum solo and then runs to the end. Uh, that was the show on September the 4th. And then the second show on the 5th starts at the beginning with I Stole Your Love, runs through calling Dr. Love, then there's a little bit of a tape break, and then it starts back up again from rock and roll all night, it finishes towards the end. So one can say you kind of have a semi-complete show, and that's kind of how it's somewhat presented here. So the first LP of the Fort Worth shows uh, starts with the second show, which is the more complete one. I'm going to take a wild guess and say that, like, it was probably recorded on a cassette or a reel-to-reel, -reel. tape ends, and then they had to do a tape switch over, and some songs were missed. That's my assumption. So there's the Paul sleeve there, and also I'm sure you can see on the jackets how there are the respective ads for the shows that uh, they represent. So there's of course the show from the Montreal Forum, and then here's the show from the Tarrant County Convention Center on the column there, which is nice. Is the picture disc there for Paul. Overall, very nice. And then, last but not least, we have Peters as well. And now, the, um, the second show rounds off uh, the first side, and then the second side is devoted to uh, what exists of the first show, uh, which is obviously the part that is not as much chronicled as the uh, second show. And here is the Peter Picture Disc. Overall, very, very nice stuff. And last but not least, we're going to get into the most beautiful part of this set and that is the booklet here and here is the front there as you can see it says can-am tour 1977 volume one canada 
we're going to talk about that in a minute. So opens up, and as always, we have a brief little opening segment with a quote from an early press clipping, individual band shots, and then here is the band on those acrylic kind of platforms. Rather infamous photo shoot from this era of the band. And here you can see various um, scans of passes. Um, there's even a picture of the original Ken Kelly painting. Of course, Ken Kelly is the one that... Um, did the album cover up work and also fun fact for all you um kiss nuts out there i'm sure you probably know this already but all of the women on the bottom of the album cover ken kelly uh referenced his wife for the sort of pale-faced uh females on the bottom of the cover there so but i'm sure you knew that already so cool stuff and then we get to the start of the tour and as you can see here, this is where they kind of start doing uh, dress rehearsals and whatnot. And there you can see some cool shots of the band in their costumes without makeup, which is quite unique and interesting to see. Get various scans of contracts. And then you get to the opening night at the Forum in Halifax, Nova Scotia in Canada with some individual shots, ticket stubs, flyers. There's even a set list and even tells you the uh, support act and the um, reported audience uh, numbers, uh, probably all taken from um, the Kiss Alive Forever book, which is the complete kind of concert, you know, log of everything from 70s up until around the early 2000s. So here you have more press clippings, more promo pieces, more photos for each show on the tour. And then here's some shots of Ace. This, this covers the uh, July 12th show from Montreal, which is featured in the set. And as you can see there, um, for any of you guys that have watched footage from the Love Gun Alive 2 era, um, Ace would do his guitar solo. But as you can see, um, he was on one of the hydraulic platforms as his guitar was smoking. So he would kind of go on the one that Paul would go on during Love Gun and just sing the chorus while being uh, rose up to the top. Um, Ace did that. And that was like early on in the tour and that wasn't really retained towards the end but there is photographic proof of course as you'll see here and here we have some shots of the demon spitting blood which is very nice and there you can see that uh that pennant that's featured in the set we have of course the uh the paper love gun insert which appeared with the original album guitar picks more print ads band photos And then, and of course, um, this shows um, the original release of the Montreal show, because this is not the first time that it's been uh, pressed on vinyl. came out on colored vinyl before, but this is going back several years, and um, it's kind of quite valuable. I mean, with these bootleg releases, there's like a certain grace period as to when they are kind of available for obviously the price that they go after, but then afterwards, once they start kind of drying up, it gets more expensive. So it kind of shows you what the original release was for that. And some, you know, details on how many numbers were pressed for certain colors and such. Then, of course, we have giant banners, more press clippings, ticket stubs, band photos, pictures shot by attendees. Here we have Ace. We've got some shots of Paul there. And then here we have the singles discography for the uh, different singles released off of the album. And then we have a print ad for uh, Then She Kissed Me, which was released uh, within the UK, as you can see with the, uh, the pie label there. And then we have a ad for Christine 16 with various center labels and covers from different countries around the world. Then we move on back to the tour, then we get to Ottawa. Got some black and white shots there, more print ads. And then there's a, a scan of the Can-Am Tour Pass. More clippings. Then we move on to... Um, this is Kitchener, Ontario. 
scans of guitar picks. We even have some photo slides there. And this is backstage at that show. More cool live shots of the band. London, Ontario. More live shots. And here we have some cool backstage shots at the London Gardens. There you can see there is a uh, that looks to be a platinum record there. Because apparently both Love Gun as well as Rock and Roll Over had obtained platinum status by the RIAA before hitting record store shelves. That's quite impressive. We got some cool shots of Peter. And there you can even see uh, some shots of um, that were used on the um, Kiss Bubblegum cards. An also interesting bit um, that I saw here um, that he had started the show uh, with the silver uh, bandoliers over his rock and roll over costume, as you can see with these photos. Because um, obviously the outfits were changed up between rock and roll over to Love Gun. But there you can see he wore that as a one off, which is quite interesting. More cool wide live shots. And there's also a crew itinerary, which is quite cool. Buttons and Polaroid shots. Cool little photo montage of the demon. Blood spoon and all. Here we have some belt buckles. Various print ads. More cool shots of Gene. We have another Peter montage there. We get to Winnipeg. More Polaroids. And then this is an official picture disc from Holland from the 80s. Also interesting, I always, it's interesting to see this variation of the KISS logo because I believe that had appeared um, in print ads for the European tour, so it's interesting to see that still being used. Vancouver, some photo slides and guitar picks. More shots. Brent adds Paul's uh, Explorer guitar. And then we get to some photo shoot stuff with various other slides seen there. And then we get to some merch. Got some various Love Gun shirts, which are pretty cool. Iron on transfers, buttons. There's also the uh, jigsaw puzzle with the album cover. All collector's pieces, of course. Get to Edmonton. Ticket stub, press clippings, more photos. And then we get to the cassette discography, and this brings together all of the different cassettes variations that were released of the album. And I can tell you right now, I believe I've had two different versions of Love Gun on cassette growing up as a kid. I believe they were both original 77 uh, runs as well as this, I believe this was a 80s version that came out. And then as you can see there's like different variations of the artwork with different text and layouts and such. There's Paul with his fire helmet for Firehouse. And then of course we have the belt buckles from the time frame which of course inspired the look of the picture discs within this set. Various ads promoting the albums for sale. What are the prices on here? Eight ninety-seven, four ninety-seven each. South Center Mall. What a time! <laughs> In terms of the prices for these, geez. Got some cool shots of Gene playing his uh, Thunderbird bass there, which was kind of used as a backup around this time. Scans of picks.
more great live shots. I mean, I gotta say, you know, these boot these bootleg sets are just worth it for just the booklets alone. Just seeing these images and just how just amazing this stuff looks. And there's the end of the show uh, with the drum riser going up during Black Diamond. And then there's the band taking their bow. And then here are all the dates for the Canadian part of the tour. Now, I am speculating, because this says Volume 1 Canada, that tells me that there should be another set coming out in the near future focusing on the U.S. leg. And already, um, I should mention that there is another uh, picture disc bootleg set called I Was There. Uh, which is centered around the shows at the LA Forum, which of course were recorded for Kiss Alive 2. Um, I have yet to come across a copy of that, and that's probably hard to come by because it is a little bit on the older side. So there is that set out there as well. Uh, but there are a couple of other things that could be done for the US part of the Love Gun Tour if they were to do a box set. They could do a box around the two shows from Houston. Uh, there's a soundboard recording from San Francisco at the Cow Palace, which I do own already. Uh, there's an audience recording from Fresno. There's a number of things that can be done, and regardless of what is done, I will probably most likely snag it, get it for myself, and showcase it here on the channel because you guys deserve to see this stuff. But there you guys go. That is my unboxing of the KISS Can-Am Tour 1977 picture disc box sets. If you enjoyed this video, please go ahead, give it a like, and subscribe to the channel. See you guys in the next video, and most importantly, keep the record spinning.